I don't know how much it could potentially stir the pot, but um, when whenever I ask a carnivore this question about why is it that on somebody on the plant-based side is so heavy on cholesterol versus the carnivore side where they're like, ah, that's, that's all shit information because of Ansel Keys and the seven country study. So what's your take on that study? Do you have four hours? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we got time. <laughs> Look, I think if you jump online and you search Ansel Keys, you can be led to believe that he um, ignored various science, he left things out, and he wanted to, to. He already had a kind of preconceived outcome, and he wanted to show that through science, which is the opposite of of how science is done. You have a hypothesis, you conduct the science, and then you are able to evaluate that hypothesis, and you might be able to falsify it or you can build on it. Uh, his research was really important research at the time. Um, he was the first person that put together this multi-country um, nutritional epidemiology study that was able to show that you know populations who are eating more saturated fat tended to have higher cholesterol and higher risk of cardiovascular disease. People say he cherry-picked countries and they often show the two graphs and there's mm. a 6 and a 22. Even on the 22 studies, if, if those 22 studies were included, that relationship still exists. It didn't go away. More saturated fat, high cholesterol, high cardiovascular disease. So the, the kind of lipid heart hypothesis very much stems from that research. But we have to remember that was back in the 60s and – that research has been corroborated and only been strengthened over time by study after study after study after study. Um, so I think it's unfair to 60 years later go back and say his study wasn't perfect. Right? <laughs> Nutrition science has evolved. Yeah. This guy was, was conducting cutting-edge science in the 1960s. Of course, in hindsight, there's little things that he could have maybe done differently, but we've learned that along the way. And that's... Um, it's not reason to discard his findings. It's reason to to say, you know, let's let's not accept his what he found as fact. Let's look at that and then look at the entire body of evidence. And when you do that, it's clear that he he his hypothesis has been proven. It was right. And so, you know, I think sometimes we can flippantly kind of just discard someone because we we've chosen a particular diet we've had an n equals one experience we feel better and uh you know it can it can make us feel better to to take the position that that science is flawed this episode is proudly brought to you by 38 terra try 38 terra's dmn prebiotic the science-based daily multivitamin for your gut microbes a simple and delicious way to take your gut health to the next level now back in stock in new and improved packaging for customers living in the United States, Australia, and New Zealand. Get 10% off your DMN at 38terra.com using the code THEPROOF. That's 38TERA.com and use the coupon code THEPROOF for 10% off. And you've probably also talked about this quite a bit, but also when you hear some carnivores talk about like plants or eating vegetables, they'll say, oh, plants are trying to kill you or, yeah. you know, you're not made to digest or eat those foods. And I know you definitely have something for that. So what is your typical response to those types of beliefs mm -hmm. or claims? Your thoughts? There are compounds in, in plant foods that can provide a, a certain amount of stress at a cellular level, but so does exercise. Mm -hmm. So does getting in the sauna. So does eating food in general. <laughs> An mm -hmm. ice bath. Um, so I, I think, you know, pointing to something and saying, hey, that contains a compound, which in an animal study was shown to be carcinogenic, therefore you can't eat that. I think we have to be very careful with that because I could connect Mark up to pure oxygen. I'm not going to do this and have him breathe in, inhale pure oxygen and, and he'll eventually pass out and die. Does that mean that oxygen is toxic? Should we stop breathing? Absolutely not. <laughs> oxygen in the concentration that it's found in air, which is at 21%, is very healthy for us. It sustains our life. We rely upon it. 
Um, so we can kind of create this argument that a certain compound is toxic in a particular context and create generate fear. Uh, and that's been done with you know, several of these compounds, like whether it's lectins or types of polyphenols where you take them out, isolate them and feed them into a rodent at doses that we would never be exposed to and, mm -hmm. and look at what happens to inflammation or leaky gut, for example. Um, but I think you have to come back to how do, how do the foods as a whole, so not isolating these things, foods as a whole in the dose that we would be exposed to, how are they affecting our health? And when you look at fruit and vegetable consumption, you see reductions in risk of cancer across the board. Um, when you look at the consumption of beans, which are rich in lectins, you see people living longer. They have lower risk of cardiovascular mortality. And in short-term studies, they have lower inflammation. So a lot of this, I think, comes back to, to dose yeah. and the fact that fear, fear sells so we can generate a lot of hype over it mm -hmm. if we take that narrative.